favorite co courses in my entire high school career. So in Internet Engineering and Design, we learn about the design process, as you might be able to tell. Um, we have to solve problems and build things. Um, for instance, on the right side of the screen there, you might recognize that as Gary from SpongeBob. That is um, something called sheet metal. What you can do is you take that design and basically the computer will flag it out for you. And you can print it on a piece of paper and it looks like this weird shape that's unrecognizable, but you cut that shape out, shape out and you fold it up and suddenly you have a perfect replica of Gary. So that's pretty cool. Um, in the class, we do a lot of things like we've built um, a toy car powered by a mousetrap using all recyclable things. And we get guest speakers from like Lawrence Livermore National La um, Laboratory and like even the Navy talking about us about these careers and like what we can actually use these skills we learn in class for. But the number of thing we do most often in intro to engineering design is use a 3D modeling software called Autodesk Inventor. If you look on the left there, that's something that I built, or three somethings that I built, um, from one of the first major projects that we do called the Toy Train Project. It starts off as everyone having to build the same standard toy train. Um, but then the real part of the project kicks in, where we have to brainstorm our own train ideas and create a marketable train. And everything about this project is modeled to what a real life engineering situation would be if we were in a job, if we were creating this and someone was paying us money for it. Um, we have constraints, we have a certain time amount, we have a scale size, like these are actual, the size of actual toy trains, and you know, it can't be anything too wild or crazy that could never exist in real life. So, um, mine is modeled after icons from the um, British television series Doctor Who, that blue thing is called the TARDIS, and the yellow thing is called the Dalek, and you know, the doctor fights the Daleks and they're evil, just they're bad news. Um, <laughs> so, the project, this project wasn't just to teach us how to use inventor software. Um, it was to, to teach us how to use our creativity, to think of a sellable toy, something that we would actually do in real life. Um, so in this way, we don't just learn software, we don't just learn facts, and like, it's not a history class, it's applicable in real life. The entire project, um, we had to find and interpret problems, we had to design solutions to them, and find new ways to solve the problems, because our first method might not be the right method. And then later in the year, like now, we just finished this project where we had to work with um, six or seven other people and we all have to collaborate. And what we ended up doing was we built an entire city. Because in real life, you can't always just do things on your own. You need to collaborate with other people and that's a major skill that you have to learn. So the entire class is taught like this with real life application in mind. In fact, Mr. Yukin, he actually works for a company that asks him to design all sorts of different things. So basically, he does exactly what we do. He makes a sketch in his notebook, he 3D models the sketch, and then, unlike us, his things actually get built, which is really cool. I would love someone to build me that part, so that would be awesome. But, um, so what I'm saying is that Intro to Engineering Design is all about ingenuity, um, teaching us real life skills about how, how to market things that can be used both um, in the class and outside of the class. If we want to go into an engineering career, or if we don't. So um, I really think that the skills you learn in this class are just skills that everyone should be able to have. So that's why everyone should be able to have, be able to take an engineering class, whether they want to be an engineer or not. Thank you. Okay, so how it's gonna work is we're gonna have 15 seconds of autonomous, which is where uh, it's pre-programmed, and then we're gonna have one minute of driving control. Um, Okay, so we're gonna start in three, two, one, go. We have a 5,400 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Kashik Kasi, and um, I'm currently studying as a sophomore in Belton High School while enrolled in the engineering, DHS Engineering Academy. And as part of the academy, I've taken introduction to engineering design, what you see up there, and I'm currently enrolled in principles of engineering, uh, as you can see in those pictures. And, um, and the engineering program at our school is one of the most engaging programs we offer. 
As part of our principles of engineering class, our principles of engineering class, um, we learn skills such as creative thinking and time management in the real world setting. And one notable example of this is in our elevator project, as you can see on the picture in the right. And in this project, we had to build a model elevator that that mimics the functions of a real elevator. And we did this by programming electrical components and motors using a programming interface. And what we did was basically we built a call light system using LEDs, motors, and sensory buttons. And we actually built a physical motor using the Fisher Technic model parts and a hobby motor. And basically what we learned through this project was the fundamentals of programming and how that can be applied to solve a real physical problem. And also what this project reinforced was the concept of thinking outside of the box and um, also documenting our findings in a way that is aligned with the industry standards. And um, as part of our engineering program, um, I would really like to thank uh, mainly our program directors as well as the staff and the community at large. Um, our program offers something, uh, our program offers um, the opportunity for students to learn how to solve real world problems using engineering. Um, an opportunity which very limited number of schools have. And so I really feel honored tonight to be able to speak in front of you. And I thank you for your time. And also I hope to see this program cooperatively grow in the future. Okay, we're gonna start the driver control in three, two, one, go. 6328 starts off with getting a bonus track and a side file. The score is the score the top with 6327 and starts the score in the other top. Both robots are trying to score hard and pack the sack in the top. The 6.8.7 goes to try to score some preloads and match loads. Half a minute left. <laughs>
So initially, we design on a circuit design software, which is similar in purpose to Autodesk Inventor. You can use it before you make your physical object to save money and time. That's why you, you use it in the real world. And then we design our or create our um, electronic circuit using breadboarding, which is the picture on the right there. It looks kind of messy there, but it, that's that's the fun of it. Um, so we make these circuits that can do a variety of things. So um, a lot of what we do is based on making lights go in certain patterns and um, making robots move. This is a robot. Um, something that we started on the on the left picture is a robot, which is a microcontroller on a a basic base that is a lot simpler than the robots here. But if we understand everything that's on that microcontroller, so we can take all those parts and make them. Um, so how this class affects me is that it's really sparked an interest in electronics within me. I was in the robotics club in past years, um, but I never really was that interested in the electrical part of robotics. I was more in the physical and programming parts. But I, I'm really fascinated by how all this ele electricity, the simple concept, can make all of these technologies happen. It's really amazing. Um, and I've actually been inspired, along with other members of the class, to buy kits that I can play with at home, like an Arduino kit, which is a microcontroller um, that students can use. It's open source, so that all the information is online. Um, like, people in our class are really interested in what we learn. And I'm sure most of us are going to grow up to be people who become engineers, whether it be in the uh, electronics field or in the electronics field. Um, so on the ending note, I just want to mention that I am really excited for the classes that are upcoming next year, um, which are STEM, Computer Integrated Manufacturing, and Software Engineering. And I want to thank you all for making